Today we hear the account of the visitation between uh, Mary and Elizabeth, and of course we, this is a very a familiar story uh, to us. If you pray the rosary, uh, we know as well that it will be the, the second mystery, right, uh, after the Annunciation, which would precede this gospel, gospel passage from Luke um, as, as well. And of course in that gospel passage from, from Luke of the Annunciation, what happens? Well, Gabriel appears to, to Mary and tells her that she's going to bear a son. That's going to be the Savior of the world. Emmanuel, God, is, is with us. But also reveals to her that her cousin, Elizabeth, who was thought to be barren, is also going to bear a child. And that she is uh, six months along. And so we pick up that passage right you know, there uh, in Luke verse one, chapter 1, verse 39. Uh, what does Mary do? When she hears this, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste. I think so often we can overlook this, that she set out in haste uh, to to this hill country. You know, there's some people out there who believe that that Mary went because she she was trying to hide her pregnancy. That's not what uh, the Catholic Church believes. That's not our, our tradition. The reason that Mary went, we believe, is because she wanted to what? She wanted to serve. Serve someone who was in greater need of her. And so she goes and serves her cousin Elizabeth, even though she herself is pregnant. And this isn't like she went, you know, on a, on a one-hour walk to go see her. She traveled all the way down from the Sea of Galilee, right, by the Sea of Galilee, um, and, and Nazareth, all the way down to the, to the hill country. And this would not be an easy, easy walk. And that hill country, if you've been there before, you definitely know, especially south of, of Jerusalem, it's, it's, it's more than hilly, it's almost like mountains. Not quite like the Rocky Mountains, but it's, it's up and down, up and down, up and down. This would be a hard journey. And yet, she was motivated to go and serve. And so she was there, for three months is kind of what tradition has uh, as well, all the way uh, to the birth of, of John the Baptist and probably even uh, his, his circumcision and his naming. It's actually depicted as well, by the way, in the second and, and third window, uh, the visitation between uh, Mary and Elizabeth, and then Mary being present uh, with Elizabeth as well at, at the birth uh, of John the Baptist. But I think so often we can overlook Mary in the sense of her service. I know that kind of sounds weird to say, like overlook Mary and whatever. That doesn't make sense at all. But sometimes we can just kind of forget that she wanted to and was motivated to serve. And not only serve Elizabeth, she too wants to be able to serve us in our times of need. That is why, of course, in the Catholic faith, we, uh, we turn to Mary to ask for what? Her intercession for her assistance along our journey as well. Um, Be it a pregnancy like Elizabeth, uh, be it some sort of hardship, be it a career move, whatever it may be, we should always invoke Mary's intercession and ask for her uh, to help. We also should be motivated by Mary as well, motivated to serve. You know, why was Mary able to to do this so graciously and in such a way of, of haste We have to remember, who was inside of her at that time? Jesus was. Jesus was was in her womb. And that's, of course, why when Elizabeth sees her, what does she say? Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So she sees two people when she sees Mary. She sees Mary, but also sees Jesus. And that Jesus has become, once again, that she is bearing him, a living being, inside of her. And it motivates her to serve. You know, every single time we come to Mass, by the way, who do we receive? We receive Jesus Christ. He becomes part of us. What that should inspire us to do, motivate us to do, is what? Is to serve, just like Mary served, even more importantly, serve just like Christ did as well. So often, though, sometimes we feel like, I just can't do it anymore, right? Maybe we feel like we're at the end 
of our rope. We've given and given and given. We feel like we have nothing left uh, to give. We can't serve anymore. When that thought comes to our mind, remember who is with you. Christ is. And if you're truly serving Christ, he'll give us all the grace that we need. We should not lack in that sense of motivation, but say, Lord, I need you. And sure enough, we know that he will provide for us. Uh, One of my favorite authors is uh, uh, Fulton Sheen. Hopefully one of these days we can say blessed Fulton Sheen, right? One of my favorite authors is Fulton Sheen, and he has a book out there called The Priest. Uh, The Priest is not his own. There's a line in there where he says, when you have nothing left to give, you're able to give the best. He says, because when you have nothing left to give, then it's Christ doing it all. Then it's Christ doing it all. And so for us, once again, when we feel these times in our life, maybe, we have nothing left to give. And we have hardly any energy left at all. Let Christ be the one that motivates you and works through you. And he will provide. We know this. You know, this week, of course, can be stressful. We know the week of, of Christmas and, and the holidays uh, and just these parties can be sometimes like we're at our wits end. And yet, don't forget who is with you, Christ. And when you come and receive him, he's not only with you, he's in you. He transforms you. We're able to share in his divinity. And because of that, we're able to go out and serve and spread the good news, to go out here in, in haste at the appropriate time, right? Not quite yet, right? But to go out in, in haste to go in and serve the needs of God. And he'll give us all that we need. And so today, let us follow in the example of Mary, who, of course, was a following an example of Christ, who came uh, to serve us and know that God truly is with us.